Good morning to uh, all of you. I'm uh, Steven van den Borre, um, and I work as a policy advisor on marine spatial planning for uh, the Belgian uh, federal government. Uh, um, I uh, um, will uh, present to you a Belgian case study of the marine spatial planning and uh, my uh, subtitle, and I hope you will understand after my presentation why uh, I used that one and what is meant uh, by it, is Head in the Clouds, Feet in the Water. In the beginning there was uh, nothing. So uh, I feel a bit now like a, a preacher of uh, uh, the MSP faith. Um, I think I don't have to convince you that uh, uh, MSP is more than a faith, that it is uh, um, more and more a common practice and a, a very uh, useful tool for policy making. But um, a friend of mine I saw a few uh, uh, months ago, um, and I didn't see her for a while, uh, asked me, okay, Stephen, what are you doing uh, uh, now for a uh, uh, for, for job? And uh, uh, I told her, well, um, I'm working on uh, uh, marine spatial planning. And she was very amazed. She looked at me, wow, you're, you're a lawyer by formation? But you uh, uh, you organize the planning of marine spaceships, so just <laughs> just to say um, it is not that common commonly known yet marine spatial planning, but uh, um, more and more. So this is a, a picture of the Belgian uh, uh, maritime area, um, seemingly vast, an enormous area, full of opportunities without uh, any uh, any limits. So first of all, um, this is in fact a very small area, the Belgian maritime area. It is uh, only half a percent of the North, uh, North East Atlantic uh, um, sea basin. So uh, um, quite, quite small, you can say. And secondly, you see a lot of space, a few uh, uh, fixed infrastructures. But uh, uh, in fact, uh, um, uh, it is a, a very crowdy area. This picture is... Uh, um, gives the, uh, the idea that you have uh, uh, still uh, uh, all uh, uh, freedom and uh, all liberty to, to, to act and to do what, what you think you, uh, you want, uh, you should do. But uh, um, it's getting more and more uh, crowded, of course. And, and that is uh, very, uh, uh, very good depicted in the following map. It's a map, in fact, that has been uh, uh, produced by, an, by a research project in 2004. So right uh, uh, before the, uh, the real start or, or the boost, uh, you can say, of marine spatial planning. And it's a map that comes from the um, Gulf project. A project that, and here again you see the surroundings of the uh, Belgian maritime area. A project that uh, uh, tries to take stock of all activities at sea in the Belgian maritime area. And uh, um, that uh, uh, was really uh, um, uh, that was really giving a boost to uh, um, uh, public attention and policy uh, makers' attention. That there was a lot, uh, uh, a lot of there were a lot of activities at sea, and more planning was needed because, uh, uh, as you see, the activities uh, uh, back in the time um, they uh, 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 surpass. Um, the, the area that is, uh, that is available. So um, the, this, this, this has led um, um, bit by bit to um, uh, the start to the start of the marine spatial planning process, the development of a marine spatial planning process in, uh, in Belgium. This is a first step in uh, uh, the, the way uh, uh, towards the marine spatial planning process as we, as we know it now. Uh, it's not um, pr uh, uh, marine spatial planning yet. It's a, a map that, uh, uh, has, uh, uh, that, that dates from 2008, again, the Belgian maritime area. But uh, it's uh, um, not integrated. And I think later on I will uh, uh, try to uh, prove to you, try to demonstrate that Integration of marine spatial planning is key to have uh, a real marine spatial planning. It's not integrated. What do I mean by that? Well, um, the, um, you have a few uh, uh, activities, not all of them, that take place. And only some competencies, and now it's a bit technical, but only some competencies uh, are uh, uh, mentioned on it. The, the, in Belgium, you have a federal and you have a regional authority. Well, only uh, federal competencies are uh, um, 
are, are incorporated in this um, uh, map. So uh, um, that's not the real marine spatial planning. Uh, we are uh, um, uh, uh, striving for uh, um, uh, nowadays. It's not um, another thing. It's uh, uh, it's not uh, a plan that or a map that has uh, been developed on the basis of a broad stakeholder consultation. Back in the time, it was more uh, top-down um, uh, enactments of some uh, some activities. You you, you have uh, maritime uh, protected uh, marine protected areas. You have some uh, renewables. Uh, uh, you have sand and gravel extraction. But um, a lot of stakeholders were left aside. Fisheries, uh, fishermen, for instance, were not involved in the drafting of this um, marine spatial uh, uh, zoning, in fact. So this is a first step, but uh, uh, it isn't uh, the marine spatial plan we were striving for. I already mentioned that. 2014, I think. Um, Things change, or things uh, have have changed uh, uh, largely. This is a map, 2014, of the marine spatial plan that is currently um, in force in uh, the Belgian uh, uh, for the Belgian maritime area. And I immediately have to, uh, um, to to say this is only a map. A marine spatial plan, to our opinion, is much more than a map with some zones that. Uh, uh, that that are that prescribe where you can uh, uh, do uh, uh, which activity. It's and and later on I will also uh, uh, tell you how uh, uh, we see the structure and the procedure of really uh, having a marine uh, um, marine spatial planning. But this is the most uh, uh, um, the most tangible and the most speaking item of the marine spatial plan that in Belgium has been adopted since 2040 covering a period to 2020. So a, a six years uh, uh, term is covered by the uh, marine spatial, the Belgian Marine Spatial Plan. And just to uh, um, give you an idea, this we are um, currently almost uh, uh, finalizing uh, the review process of the Belgian Marine Spatial Plan. So um, this is the draft map of the uh, uh, the, the spatial plan, the marine space, the Belgian marine spatial plan, for the next period of six years, covering 2020-2026. Um, if there would be any questions, of course, feel free to uh, to ask them to intervene. No problem at all. And what is meant? Uh, you think by the end of the journey is a new beginning? Is there anybody who has an idea uh, what that could mean? What ca characteristic uh, could be a uh, um, could be uh, uh, kept or, or captured by uh, uh, that that title. Nobody, yeah. It's dynamic. Right, indeed. It's uh, uh, an adaptive uh, process. It's dynamic. Uh, uh, once you adopt the marine spatial plan, then in fact you can say everything starts again or everything's continu everything continues because a marine spatial plan uh, you adopt it, but it has to be uh, implemented and. There again, you have to make choices on the basis of what information will you implement, uh, uh, who will you involve, which authorities will be uh, uh, will be uh, around the table. So uh, um, that's in fact the the never-ending cycle you 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 try to uh, uh, achieve and and, and uh, in fact try in, in order to improve the marine spatial plan uh, uh, time after time. Well, um, I've showed you uh, I've shown you some uh, some maps. And I think um, after what I already told you, you will recognize some drivers I mentioned here on, uh, on the screen. There has been a, a top-down process, uh, some uh, top-down drivers that uh, have uh, pushed uh, uh, Belgian authorities uh, to uh, um, adopting uh, uh, or to organizing a marine spatial planning process and bottom-up. I think it's uh, uh, both have been very uh, important to uh, arrive where we, uh, where we are now. Top down, um, there have been some uh, soft and hard law international uh, and European uh, initiatives uh, uh, been taken. Um, the Directive 2014 is uh, maybe uh, uh, the most uh, uh, important one because within European context, directives have to be implemented by uh, national authorities. So 
you see it has been uh, adopted in 2014 and this uh, directive in fact frames how all European authorities have to uh, um, have to uh, uh, organize their uh, um, marine spatial planning. It's a, um, a broad directive. You get a lot of uh, um, margin to maneuver, but the, the main principles are uh, um, enacted uh, uh, in, in that directive. But that's not all. And it, I think it's very interesting if you want to know, well, marine spatial planning, which principles could be uh, uh, interesting, which uh, ideas are uh, uh, important to, uh, um, to organize uh, marine spatial planning. Well, you will find uh, most of them in the communication that has been uh, adopted in 2008 it, by the European Commission. So the European Commission also plays a role within the European uh, uh, Union uh, uh, policy making process. That communication uh, is not binding, but it's, uh, um, it takes stock of, of, of the, the, the very important uh, um, um, principles that, uh, uh, that, that have to rule, let's say, the, the marine spatial planning or that uh, are uh, needed to, uh, to, to get to, uh, to a good marine spatial plan. So uh, um, uh, the roadmap for maritime spatial planning, achieving common principles in the EU, you should uh, uh, take a look at it or uh, feel free to take a look at it because it's uh, quite interesting. Uh, the same goes for a UNESCO document, step-by-step uh, -step approach towards ecosystem-based management. Charles Ehler, uh, uh, a worldwide authority on marine spatial planning, has adopted uh, and has drafted that, uh, um, that uh, approach. So again, if you would like to know more about what is marine spatial planning and how can you uh, 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 organize and deploy it, well, um, that's a document you definitely should, uh, should read. Of course, national or international and, and, and European uh, uh, law has to be implemented and has to be uh, uh, put in practice. Um, uh, even aside from a, a lot of uh, uh, international activities, national policy makers more and more felt that there was an instrument needed to, uh, um, to, to organize, to harmonize the um, spatial impact of a lot of uh, policies that uh, uh, ran on a um, uh, national level. The designation of uh, marine protected areas, um, renewable energy and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, new targets that are set by uh, uh, European policies. Extraction of mineral resources, sand for instance, a very, uh, a very useful, very uh, uh, much needed uh, um, uh, raw material for a construction uh, business. So it, more and more it, there was a need for more space and, and there wasn't a tool to organize things. And uh, um, that, 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 that went uh, um, uh, hand in hand with uh, the second one, that, uh, that's the hands-on uh, policy makers. Um, very, in, uh, very important uh, to have a marine spatial plan in your country is that you have uh, persons, policy makers, that, uh, um, that, 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 that take it forward. That you, you, you can have a good idea, but uh, uh, if uh, uh, there's no one, there's no policy maker that you can convince about uh, uh, the, uh, the quality of the idea, then it will take a, a a long time to, 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 to realize it. Well, in Belgium, there were some um, uh, persons that, that, that have taken forward the idea of marine spatial planning. And I think uh, um, that was one of the key elements as well, one of the reasons why we in Belgium, I think we can say we often, uh, we don't often uh, um, uh, f find ourselves in, in, in the, uh, the pioneering or in the steering uh, uh, cabin uh, with respect to, uh, to, to, to policies at European level, but with respect to marine spatial planning, I think we can say we are one of, of, of the pioneers. And that has uh, to do with uh, um, the right persons that took up the idea, the, the, the idea uh, uh, its time had come and uh, um, the, the right persons were there to... Uh, uh, to, uh, um, to, 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 to bring it uh, uh, on the political agenda. Bottom up, of course, um, we were not only uh, driven by uh, um, top down and, and, and by international or European uh, uh, administration uh, processes. Um, there was little space. 
uh, there were much more uh, uh, persons uh, or much more uh, uh, stakeholders that needed space to uh, uh, realize uh, uh, their uh, their dreams or their uh, um, their uh, aspirations. So um, there, from there was also uh, uh, the, the the demand to have a kind of marine spatial planning to have more uh, space allocated for their activities. So. That was a good combination, um, the top-down, the bottom-up, that was a good combination to really start marine spatial planning in uh, the Belgian uh, uh, maritime area. Well, some process, uh, process principles. Um, a marine spatial plan is uh, an instrument. That means it's not uh, an, uh, um, uh, a target by itself. It's, I already mentioned, it has uh, the, uh, it has to function as a tool to help other policies, marine uh, uh, ecological, uh, uh, economic, uh, uh, societal uh, policies, to help them uh, realize and to harmonize their demand for uh, maritime space. Um, it has to be integrated, uh, or it isn't, uh, uh, or, or it's not a real uh, spatial plan. That means that it has to cover all competencies. Legally binding is a um, very important, but there you have to strike the balance, I think, between uh, having, um, uh, having a, a, the legal certainty, knowing what you can do within which time, uh, within, uh, which, uh, time frame. On the other hand, um, being uh, uh, sufficiently open for uh, um, new uh, uh, emerging activities, for, uh, uh, for a changing uh, uh, context. So uh, uh, there you have to, uh, to, to, to find the balance, uh, uh, we think. And already mentioned another one is uh, um, at, uh, the adaptiveness of the process. So uh, um, the marine spatial plan in Belgium is uh, uh, encompasses a period of six years, but uh, um, it can also be changed, uh, modified uh, uh, within a, uh, with via an uh, intermediary modification uh, uh, procedure. Um, it has to be information driven. So. Uh, um, Later on, you will see that uh, part of the marine spatial plan is, uh, um, the, uh, is taking stock of what happens within the area that we are planning and uh, uh, which are the main characteristics of, uh, of that area. Stakeholder participation, very uh, important, transparency, and um, last but definitely not least, the ecosystem-based approach. There you could say, okay, uh, uh, people all, uh, often speak about ecosystem-based uh, uh, ecosystem approach. Is it really um, part of the process or is it already uh, um, a decision you make on content? Well, I think this one is that important that we consider it as uh, 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 a very, uh, 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 very key part of the um, of the marine spatial planning process. Do you have any questions uh, uh, up to now? No. Legal basis. I already told you very uh, uh, important. Anyhow, you have to strike the balance with uh, uh, the, um, the the need for uh, uh, enough flexibility. We have uh, enacted it in a, in a law that's uh, not too, uh, too important and uh, um, the marine spatial plan is uh, adopted uh, via a, a royal decree, but uh, uh, that's uh, not too important in fact. M a bit more interesting to you I think is how you can organize uh, a procedure to, uh, uh, to, uh, to have a marine spatial plan. Well, um, a preliminary draft is uh, um, is adopted and uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, draft is then submitted to an advisory committee. Com uh, committee excuse me. That committee uh, consists of uh, uh, some uh, authorities um, and they have um, a consultative uh, voice to, uh, um, in fact, uh, uh, improve the preliminary draft and to uh, uh, convert it in a, a draft marine spatial plan. And then it goes, in fact, uh, uh, public. After that uh, uh, conversion of the, uh, the preliminary, prelim preliminary draft to uh, uh, the draft marine spatial plan, then uh, there is a, a broad public consultation. In fact, that is putting in practice what we told about uh, um, stakeholder participation. Um, the uh, 
public, stakeholders, authorities, neighboring states, uh, and everyone who has an idea, who has uh, desires, who has a, 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 a comments to make, uh, um, is invited to do so. And uh, um, that uh, has uh, um, that that has been a, a very uh, a useful tool to uh, um, to improve the marine spatial plan as we uh, as we have it adopted now and as it has been reviewed. Uh, for the period 2020-2026. Uh, another important one is the strategic environmental assessment. That's, uh, uh, I suppose, it's, it's well known uh, to all of you. Um, it's uh, um, already at strategic level organizing an, an environmental impact report in order to, uh, uh, to know which impact your uh, marine spatial plan will have and to adapt it in case there are uh, um, un, uh, unwanted uh, uh, consequences. So uh, um, it's, uh, in Europe it's prescribed again by, uh, by directive, uh, but uh, I think it should be something that, that uh, uh, sh uh, should be considered uh, anywhere in the world as one of the steps to, uh, to get to uh, um, uh, an integrated uh, um, and a uh, um, good marine spatial plan in, in balance. Yeah. I, I I'm a little bit confused as to what would go I'm not confused, but what would you put into the draft, the preliminary draft, what would feed into that? Because I'm not sure I, I think that you'd have to do some amount of work before you get to a draft. That's uh, um, what you do now is uh, uh, introducing my next slide. So thank you for that. No, <laughs> no, 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 it's uh, interactivity. Uh, uh, what do you put in the draft? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, uh, this is the structure of the marine spatial plan. So uh, uh, first of all, uh, very important, and it has to do with the uh, uh, information-driven character. Uh, a spatial analysis of the Belgian parts of the North Sea. So, uh, which, uh, uh, what does it look like? Which are the characteristics? Uh, uh, which are the physics? Which, which activities take place? Uh, which uh, nature values uh, uh, are uh, at stake? That's, I think, base, uh, basic uh, to, to really start planning. If you don't know your subject, you will plan, then you, uh, you already uh, uh, lose from, uh, uh, from, in, from the beginning of the process. Um, and uh, on that basis, or uh, going along with that, you also uh, build a long-term vision. So uh, uh, marine spatial planning often is uh, um, concised to a, a period of uh, five, six, ten years, but you have to know where you want to go beyond that, uh, that period. And uh, um, that is uh, uh, done via uh, the long-term uh, uh, vision. Later on, I will tell you, we have had a parallel uh, process on building a long-term vision. Again, it was a, a stakeholder uh, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, stakeholder involvement. So uh, um, now we, uh, uh, we think we have uh, a good, uh, sound, uh, long-term vision. Um, that vision that encompasses a period of 20, uh, uh, 30, 40 years, that has to be translated in targets. Six year uh, uh, well defined targets, in, uh, if possible, go, um, side by side with um, uh, indicators. You know, uh, uh, smartly, uh, smart uh, indicators uh, um, where you uh, can really, on via the indicators, know whether you are um, heading to achieving a target or not. So uh, uh, I think that's uh, uh, an important one as well. And uh, um, then you take the measures. You, uh, you, you build the whole policy frame in order to have your uh, marine spatial plan to, to have it adopted and to have it implemented. Uh, where do I find the finances uh, for uh, uh, the, res the financial resources for uh, uh, implementing? Uh, um, who has to be uh, uh, involved? Which actions have to be taken on uh, um, the uh, uh, authorities level to, um, to implement? So that's in fact what you put in a draft version, pre-draft version in the marine space plan. No, that's what we in Belgium have put there. You can, uh, 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 this disagree, of course. You can add things. You can uh, uh, remove things. But uh, that's how it looks like uh, in Belgium. This uh, uh, is a um, 
again, uh, the map I already showed on a, uh, uh, the draft map of the Marine Spatial Plan 2020-2026. Some highlights, uh, um, I don't know whether uh, uh, that's interesting to you, but if you read those, uh, uh, those elements that, that, that make a change, uh, make a difference with respect to uh, the Marine Spatial Plan adopted in 2014, you will see that there are uh, um, both uh, uh, ecological, uh, um, uh, uh, ecological measures, there are uh, um, economy, uh, economy uh, uh, measures, let's say, uh, you see new zones for re renewable energy uh, uh, within the Belgian maritime area. We will double the, um, uh, the, the, the capacity of the Belgian maritime area for uh, um, renew, uh, producing uh, renewable uh, energy. Shipping, very important, of course. Belgium is uh, uh, on the crossroads of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, very important uh, uh, international shipping routes, has, has some uh, uh, seaports that uh, uh, play a, a, a role at global level, so uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we have to incorporate uh, them, of course. Uh, scientific test projects, uh, um, and that's interesting for you. Uh, I think a lot of scientists uh, are here. Um, um, science is uh, allowed within the Belgian maritime area everywhere, except in cases uh, where there are uh, restrictions or, or uh, other conditions. And uh, um, moreover, there is a specific zone dedicated uh, or allocated for uh, scientific uh, projects where uh, science is really uh, uh, the main activity that, uh, that can take place. So uh, um, for, uh, for us within Belgian uh, policy, science is uh, uh, really a driver to, uh, uh, to, to, to move forward. And, and we wanted to allocate uh, uh, enough space, space to really realize it uh, in the upcoming term of, of, of six years. Um, well, the rest you can, uh, you can uh, uh, read, so uh, uh, I will um, go uh, uh, to the next slide. Maybe on two more items, two more uh, uh, elements that are interesting, that were important within uh, uh, our spatial planning and, and that's, that, that can uh, uh, make or break a marine spatial plan. Um, stakeholder participation. Um, in uh, um, 2000, now the end of the 90s, there were already some uh, um, some hesitant uh, uh, attempts to um, uh, allocate and designate areas, maritime protected areas within the Belgian uh, within the Belgian mar uh, mar uh, maritime area. But uh, uh, of course, if you uh, adopt that kind of measures, uh, it's a, a trade-off with respect to some other activities. Fishermen, for instance, were very uh, hesitant, were very afraid, uh, were mad that uh, uh, their free use of the maritime space, you, you remember the picture where uh, you had uh, uh, no fixed installations, only shipping and fishing uh, uh, activities. Well, they were uh, um, very uh, uh, afraid that the, the new marine protected areas would uh, um, hamper their activities uh, uh, and the liveliness of, uh, of, of, of their, uh, um, their, uh, uh, their business. So uh, um, there was no planning back in the time. There was a, a, a top-down approach. We will, uh, um, we will uh, designate and uh, nothing, uh, nothing else. Well, it hasn't worked. They, uh, uh, they have... Uh, uh, um, they, 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 they put pressure, they have put pressure, they have, uh, um, uh, they, uh, have tried or they uh, um, were menacing to, to try uh, or menacing to block uh, port areas, uh, the entry of port areas. And so uh, it was removed of the political table, uh, the marine protected areas weren't designated. What do I mean by that? Um, if you don't involve stakeholders, if you don't create a co-ownership, if you don't uh, ask them what they want, if you don't try to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to balance their activities with uh, the emerging activities and with nature values, then you're lost. It's so important to involve your uh, stakeholders to get their information and to get their support. So that's why, in fact, I, 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 I have made a few slides on this. Um, I will um, briefly uh, uh, go through, through, this, uh, uh, through this slide. Uh, uh, it's about the, the cyclical, uh, the dynamic character of uh, marine spatial planning. 
you evaluate, evaluate a marine spatial plan that is uh, adopted for a period, but while evaluating, you already prefer, uh, prefer, uh, uh, prepare, uh, prepare uh, a new marine spatial plan. So after the adoption 2014 uh, uh, of the marine spatial plan, uh, an informal questionnaire has been uh, uh, sent out to, uh, to hear from uh, um, all stakeholders from other authorities. What do you think uh, uh, of, this, of the process? What has been a, a good way of working? What, uh, what wasn't? So that was very important to know how do we, um, do we fine tune uh, the process? Do we take some new uh, um, um, fundamental changes uh, within the process? Do we have to give more time? Do, do we have to speed up some, uh, some parts? Uh, that was a, a very good way to know how to, uh, uh, to move forward with the review of, uh, of, of this marine spatial plan for the period 2020-2026. Same has been done uh, with respect to the, uh, the content. What do you think should be, if we change the marine spatial plan, 2017 we, we, we got started with that, but in, uh, ahead of that uh, time, uh, what should be in the new marine spatial plan? And uh, uh, that was also part of what uh, uh, what we find what we have found in the marine and the pre-draft of the marine spatial plan. The, uh, we already knew what stakeholders wanted or what their desire what were what their desires were for a marine spatial plan in uh, uh, for the period 2020-2026. So there you combine formal um, requirements with informal. Part of stakeholder information and desires, and and and, and that has for for a, 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 a big part of uh, for a big part uh, um, determined the way of, of of working, and and that it's going quite fluently. Uh, the marine spatial planning review process uh, we uh, we are having now. Um, due throughout the preparation of the plan, the uh, informal questionnaire I already mentioned, informal context, very context, very important. Uh, but when you have informal contacts, be transparent. If you create a situation where a stakeholder thinks, "Okay, I'm hurt," or uh, uh, but uh, another stakeholder is uh, 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 more often uh, consult consulted, or uh, um, some stakeholders have more information throughout the process than other stakeholders, then um, you uh, jeopardize your process. It's very important to, to hear, uh, to, to be open for, uh, for a, a consultation, but to be transparent in the way uh, um, you, you have it. And this is a, um, a, a, one, a last slide on stakeholder participation and my one but last uh, 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 as, a, as a whole. Um, it's on the implementation of the plan. There again, stakeholders play a very important role. Um, create or try to uh, uh, remove thresholds for contact. It's uh, uh, very important again to have uh, um, uh, the information. There's a lot of information out there. Stakeholders uh, uh, have uh, uh, many experience, so. Um, Try to to catch to uh, uh, to catch that information for the uh, for the better of your uh, um, marine spatial plan, um, and meet uh, stakeholders in case there is a problem, in case you have questions, in case uh, uh, things don't don't run smoothly. Uh, um, be open, be open to uh, uh, to involve them. It will it will improve and uh, uh, it will increase their uh, um, co ownership and and. That's a, a very important uh, uh, element of uh, uh, marine spatial planning. Um, we just, the, the, the last two uh, items you can, you can read, it's also uh, uh, about having stakeholders involved. So uh, um, maybe uh, um, you can read that if you want to on uh, um, the online forum. And then a last one on information. Our marine spatial plan is information driven. Um, but how do you collect uh, information? Because you can continue and go on and, and, and make new researches and, and, uh, and uh, uh, organize new projects. But at a certain point in time, you have to say, okay, now we start, marine, we start uh, uh, with the marine spatial planning in practice, hands-on. 
does that mean that then you have all available inform you have all uh, information needed? No, that's not uh, uh, that's not uh, necessary either, because um, uh, since it is a very cyclical project, you can organize, you can uh, uh, have your marine spatial plan adopted, um, and via the, uh, um, the, the the cyclical uh, uh, process and via the implementation rounds, you uh, uh, you can go on and uh, uh, continue to upgrade your information in order to have um, a continuous flow of incoming information that can be used continuously to, uh, um, to, to plan uh, your marine spatial uh, area. Um, and I think there it is a very important uh, uh, element to um, not go uh, beyond the point of no return in case, uh, uh, in case you don't have uh, sufficiently mature information. So you can plan, be flexible in your marine spatial planning. Um, you uh, have the, during implementation, you have a, a, a permit procedures, you have a consultation procedures, uh, uh, whatever, but only make the decision to build a wind farm that, uh, that will be uh, uh, in the maritime area for 30 years. Once you know, okay, it's, uh, um, it's uh, uh, good to have it there and we want to have it there uh, for 30 years on the basis of sound uh, and, 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 and sufficiently uh, uh, validated information. So it's a, a plea that uh, for, uh, for having smart planning, not uh, make, a, 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 um, make, make a spatial plan that is uh, uh, very uh, static and uh, uh, that, that cannot uh, um, take up the um, the changes that are uh, um, that are uh, occurring uh, uh, around and, and, and that are occurring in uh, the area where you uh, uh, where you want to uh, have a, a sound marine spatial planning. That's about it. Thank you. Are there any questions? Well, in fact, we have it took uh, a bit too long. In a way, we have our we've had our for, formal process that started uh, um, uh, uh, end of two thousand seventeen. Um, now we are end of two thousand nineteen. Uh, and uh, we are about to adopt the um, marine spatial plan at the level of a, a, a policy of, of, of minister, the council of ministers. It will be adopted by uh, by the king via the royal decree, uh, spring 2019. It will enter into force uh, spring 2020, and the informal process before we started that in that formal process started in uh, February 2017. So it took. Two hours, uh, two hours. What did I say? Uh, two years and a, uh, two years and a half. Uh, 2017, 2000. In fact, uh, three years and a half from uh, the the very start, the uh, the first meeting with stakeholders, and uh, uh, to the um, to the uh, entry into force. We had a lot of information, but you have to avoid stakeholder fatigue. Uh, so, I, I I said how important. I told you how important. I think a stakeholder. Um, Involvement is, but um, you have to uh, um, to be focused. And maybe during the process we had now, we were not focused enough. That will be changed f probably uh, um, for for next uh, uh, review of the marine spatial plan. Um, but uh, um, it is yeah, it is important. Even if you think, okay, we have our formal process, so uh, um, we have to in, uh, involve stakeholders, and we've done what we uh, uh, what we were required to do. It's important to uh, to be uh, um, adaptive within your process and to say, okay, now we need we need a break. Uh, some people are, or some stakeholders uh, aren't following. Uh, uh, there's some uh, there are some uh, objections. Uh, um, let's uh, um, introduce through in the process uh, an informal round, or let's go. Find them uh, uh, on their on the floor. Let's see uh, uh, if we can have a meeting. And that's you have to find that balance between uh, uh, not involving them too much, so uh, focused enough. On the other hand, 
uh, not uh, uh, leaving uh, leaving them aside because it's uh, uh, I already said uh, green spatial planning is made or is broken by a uh, um, co-ownership by the support you get from uh, the people who really uh, on the field uh, have to uh, um, have to implement and have to uh, uh, respect uh, uh, the rules that, that are put in the green spatial plan hmm? they are engaged but it's uh, uh, obvious that uh, um, the more you are organized the more you are uh, working within uh, uh, a group with a, a, a spokesperson or a, a phase, or the more you are uh, annoying a policymaker to say, "I, I want to be heard. Uh, can I hurt? Can I, can I come and, and make my point?" The more you will make your point. So, it's for some um, for some organizations and for some uh, sectors, it's difficult. Fishermen, for instance, they say, "Okay, let me fish. I don't want to go to Brussels." Uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to do politics, uh, I want to fish. So uh, um, others do uh, other sectors do very uh, uh, are, are very aware of, of the importance of, of lobbying of uh, uh, going there and, and, and making their point again and again and again. So you, you have to from time to time you have to try to help them to organize them. It sounds a bit paternalistic, but to help to, to, to find some organization, some 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 face to, to know, okay, if I have a question on fisheries, then I go to that person and he has a good view on what lives and uh, what they want, what they really want. Does it say um, stakeholders that do you mean that they lose focus? Uh, they lose focus in the way that we started 2017, um, 2020, they will see the results of what we started in 2017, and that's a very long period. They they uh, they, they have uh, had their formal uh, um, their informal um, contribution. They are they have been invited to um, discuss um, on their uh, contribution uh, with, with with authorities. They have had formal periods uh, uh, for uh, uh, contributions. You, yeah, I can imagine that they think. I think it's needed. So uh, we, maybe we have to uh, um, to uh, um, make it a bit more compact. But it's needed to uh, to go to let formal and informal process go uh, going along. But I can imagine if you don't communicate uh, properly that they will think: Are they there again? What do, what do they want more from me? I already told what I uh, what I want and. They also think, okay, uh, 2017, my first contribution, 2019, what changed? I didn't see a marine spatial plan yet. And uh, even if you communicate, you have to continue to, 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 to focus and uh, to, to, to reach the, the right groups. So that's what I meant by uh, stakeholder fatigue. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, hmm? but you did say there was an initial plan that failed. There was a plan. Uh, uh, there was uh, an initial uh, um, try to, um, to to designate marine protected areas. Okay. So it's not. It, it wasn't a plan at all. That was one of the problems. There was no planning. There was a top-down decision. Oh, we need uh, marine protected areas uh, uh, at sea. Well, uh, there, 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 and there. Uh, maybe we will involve some scientists to uh, to say where nature values uh, uh, occur that that should be uh, protected and that was it and we, if we would have had and now that's that's uh, uh, the, the current uh, marine spatial planning process is the best uh, uh, demonstration of it we now we have that marine spatial planning process and now we involve them and and it goes it goes pretty well they know okay uh, um, Fish, the, the, the good times where all, the, the whole sea was was available for fishing, they are uh, um, behind us. But on the other hand, you can uh, uh, try to uh, um, to to organize that uh, uh, that impact in a uh, smooth way to uh, uh, to compensate, to uh, to to uh, uh, consult, to listen. You have a, a, a big. Uh, uh, um, a big uh, uh, amount of measures that that can be taken to to keep them on board, even though they, uh, at first sight, they lose by having other activities that hamper their uh, their fisheries activities. Was there, was there also a change in government support of the plan? 
the initial plan was commissioned by who versus this one now? Um, the uh, initial plan was uh, uh, commissioned by the, the gov by government. Okay. So, so uh, it's the same set of people who have commissioned the second. No. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So the competencies have uh, remained uh, uh, the same, but uh, um, the approach has changed. Uh, the, no, in, in fact, the approach, it, as I said, the formal the formal procedure has has remained. Um, an informal uh, pre -pro uh, process. To, to collect uh, uh, the, the comments and, and, and the desires of stakeholders has been put uh, uh, in, in advance of the, the real formal process, but the, uh, the main elements have remained. That doesn't mean that we, don't, uh, that we shouldn't uh, evaluate the process we've had now and uh, uh, improve where we, uh, where we can uh, do so. Any more uh, questions?